Uh, so, Daylight, uh, you know, talk a little bit about the decision to make a procedurally generated game, you know, where it will be different for every user, you know, where, where no player or even one player playing multiple times will ever have the same experience. That's that's actually I think it's going to be the next generation of gameplay is is that procedurally or replay being such a huge key. I mean, look at Minecraft and DayZ. Those games just blew up because you were talking about it. You could say what I was doing, all those things, and and that's what we really wanted to do with this. And you know, we we got UE4 and we started messing around with it. We saw all these great tools that we were able to make. I mean, the fact that it's being done by such a small team is huge, and it's. I'm really, really proud of what Zombie's pulling off this year. I mean, what did what does Unreal 4 allow you to do that wouldn't necessarily have worked in Unreal 3? Uh, the main thing is what they call blueprints, and that's how we're procedurally uh, uh, putting populating the the maps. So those those are placing all the things inside. So we we really just build core rooms, and then the blueprints actually populate the entire map. So we just put a bucket of of different things into it and it just fills it up. That's why that's why I don't have to have a bunch of designers and a bunch of uh, just you like it's just a really cool thing that it just ev does everything for us and it's just it's so cool. And then and then just the dynamic lighting is is the key part. We don't have to build the lighting so it allows us to do everything that we need. Uh, from a storytelling perspective, was it a challenge making sure there was enough content to cover like a billion possible scenarios? You know, Honestly, and I and this is going to sound slightly egotistical, but because I'm really into this kind of thing, like the horror genre and just horror in general and, and murders and all that stuff, um, which makes me sound like a complete freak, I already had a lot going on in my head <laughs> that I was able to put down on paper. So for me, it was really easy to build the world. I think that the biggest challenge so far, and this is just a great education for me from this perspective, is that, you know, up to this point, I'm strictly media, and so I only had my experience as far as interviewing people. Now to see what it takes in order to write a story around gameplay and game mechanics and how if one thing changes, it changes the whole storyline and the timeline and what you need to adjust. It's just really shown me how much work, even on a smaller scale game like this, is actually involved. And that's where I think the challenge for me has been. Not necessarily the creative aspect, because there's a lot of crazy to draw from. <laughs> But more from just like the actual act of writing and experiencing how that goes down. Uh, you know, look the episodic model you were talking about about adding kind of continued chapters as you go. Um, how many mechanics can you introduce and still feel like you have the core experience? I mean, is there any concern about kind of diluting that that core, you know, mysterious, crazy game? It's it's something that we're going to find out. I mean, the thing is, is all of us at the studio are hardcore gamers. I mean, that's it's a passion project, really. So I think. We're not afraid, and, and, and since we're putting it out ourselves, we can call ourselves out. It's not like we have to meet a milestone, or we, we said it was going to be there, so now someone's calling us on it. If we put something in and it, and it messes the game up, we're, we're just going to pull it right back out. So that's the way I see it. It's, it's, it's not very scary when you have full control over it. And uh, you know, it'll be, it'll be really interesting when, when we add the new chapters, those will be more, more essentially more Legos thrown into the bucket for the engine to just spit out. And we'll, we'll make you know, systems that will be able to balance that out as much as possible. When you have mechanics like uh, the, the different methods of the phone, the different kind of apps that you have in the phone, um, but in a procedurally generated world, is there any concern that players won't encounter a situation where they need to learn a certain mechanic and then maybe might not know it when they need it later? It's so simple that you'll come across these things and you'll just press the button. I mean, the, the, the phone mechanics are going to be on the mouse and, and the keys. So if you've played a first-person shooter or a game, you're going to click on those and be like, oh, that does that. Oh, okay, cool. You know, and, and I'm not too afraid of that, but what we might do is we'll, we'll, I mean, we're, we're professional developers. I mean, we've all been doing it for years, so we know when we play it and people give us feedback, that's a great part about the downloadable content idea is if we put the game out and it has issues, we just update it, done. We don't have to put it through cert, we don't have to do anything like that, it's just boom, throw it out there.